So this is a video response to Jaron, who recently proposed a challenge to myself and several other people. And uh, the challenge was to model a rotating globe and to see if it would actually produce star trails. Now, I have actually done that and uh, I produced a practice video yesterday and I've noticed that Jaron has already come to that video and commented that I'm not using a ball. But what I'm using is the correct geometry for a ball and I'll explain that further in the video. Now, Jaron did the experiment himself by mounting a laser to a globe and then he rotated the globe and identified that the laser did not remain in the one position pointing at Polaris. Now the reason that occurred is because he has a piece of string attached to the top of the globe and that piece of string is aligned along that red line. Okay. However, it should be aligned correctly with the rotational axis of the Earth and that is indicated by the yellow line. As you can see, they are misaligned quite badly and that will result in the laser position moving as you rotate the globe. Now to make matters worse, his laser is not even aligned north-south, so that's only going to accentuate the problem. In my demonstration, I use a precision mount, I align the lasers accurately, and you will see that they don't move. Now the absence of a physical blue ball globe is completely irrelevant because the geometry is exactly the same. So before I go any further, I just want to clarify, Jaron, that I don't hate you. I have no ill feeling towards you at all. I wish you a long and happy life, and that's, uh, that's the truth. I don't watch your videos. I don't post on your channel. The only reason I saw this challenge is because somebody posted on my channel and linked to it. So I thought I'd take a look, and uh, it looked interesting and it looked a lot of fun. And I've got a week in a hotel with not much else to do, so I thought this would be just uh, some fun to pass the time. Now, please remember that, Jaron. I wish you no harm. I mind my own business, okay? You're the one that keeps mentioning my name. You're the one that keeps making videos about me. I don't make videos about you. The only reason I mention your name is when I'm replying to one of your videos. You recently told me that I'm not worth wasting time with. Well, that's fine. Why don't you uh, honor that and just forget about me? You seem to be obsessed with me and you seem to just continually want to talk about me. Why, mate? I'm not interested in anything you do, and what you believe is quite irrelevant to me. You live on the other side of the planet, we are never going to meet. In fact, I invited you to Australia. You and your wife could have had a wonderful holiday looking at the Southern Star Trails, looking at the Equinox from Australia, at my cost. But no, you didn't want to accept that. You just wanted to call me a deceiver. So, mate, live and let live. You know, nothing you've done has offended me at all. You've just demonstrated your own character and I have no ill feelings towards you at all. Zero. So uh, anyway, I'll continue with my uh, video. So for the laser part of the demonstration, I've got this uh, Skywatcher star discovery mount and I've located a laser right at the rotational point. I've just secured it there with uh, plasticine. And as you can see, it's just exactly at the point of rotation. So when that laser is on, it will uh, illuminate a spot on the ceiling. And I'll demonstrate that shortly. And uh, what I've also got is my iPhone with a second laser just attached to the top. And you can turn it on and off with the app. And that will also be located in the same position. Now, what we then do is uh, we align the phone at a slight angle. Now that's simulating how it would be positioned if it was on an earth. Now we're not five years old, we don't need to see a blue ball here. We can visualize the geometry of the earth quite accurately like that. So the rotational axis of the earth is straight up that beam of laser at the center and this one is reflecting the uh, position of a person on the earth's surface which would be curved like that and somebody looking towards Polaris. Now depending upon your latitude you'll be looking high or low in the sky. So that's what this is simulating. So we are effectively simulating the geometry of a person on the globe looking at Polaris in this situation. So I'll just fire up the lasers and uh, I'll show you how it works and how they do actually remain co-located. The problem with Jaron's experiment was that he has not aligned the string 
with the true rotational axis of the Earth, and also he does not have his laser aligned perfectly north and south. So both of those errors combine to cause that laser dot to move when he rotated the Earth. But as you'll see, when it's done precisely, it will line up perfectly. Now I'm going to do it two ways. I'm going to do it pointing straight up, and then just to uh, keep the naysayers at bay, I'm going to lower one of the tripod legs and angle the base so that it's 23.4 degrees. Now it's completely irrelevant to this demonstration to do that, but as I said, I'll do it so that uh, people cannot argue that um, there was a uh, difference in the angle compared to the Earth's axial tilt. So I now have the laser illuminated and it's pointing directly above the mount. Now if I rotate that mount 180 degrees or 360 degrees, the dot on the ceiling does not move because I've aligned it accurately with the rotational axis of this mount. Okay, so I'm holding it there, moving it there. It does not change position. Now, what I'm going to do is turn on the second laser and you'll see that they are actually co-aligned. Okay, so now that I've got both lasers turned on, we're going to also move the mount. Now, let me just start here. You can see that the dots are aligned. When I move the mount 180 degrees, the dots are still aligned. I can move that all the way around 360 degrees and the dots will remain aligned. So we're simulating that geometry quite accurately and the dots are still aligned. No matter where I move that mount around a full 360 degrees, it's still going to remain that way. So again, the problem with Jaron's experiment was poor alignment. He didn't take the time to set it up properly. When it's aligned correctly, it works as it should. Now I'll just uh, angle the mount and try that again at a 23.4 degree tilt. So I've just aligned this mount now at 23 degrees and I've done that just by lowering one of the legs. And uh, as you can see, the laser is now pointing at one position on the ceiling. Now when I turn on the second laser again, you'll see that they are co-aligned. I'll turn that on and off so you can see it, that they are in fact co-aligned. Now when I turn the mount, when I rotate the mount, even while it's tilted, they will remain aligned and fixed in the one position. Okay, so we'll see the mount in that position. The lights are co-aligned. When we move it 180 degrees, the opposite direction, they are still co-aligned. Okay, so the actual tilt axis, as we're looking at it in this video, is quite relevant. It's the geometry of that central rotational axis and the second laser pointing at the same position in the sky that is important. And when the geometry is held accurately, as it is being done on this mount, you can rotate that around 360 degrees and the two dots won't move and they will remain co-located, as you can see. So I'm in the process of making this final video for Jeren's challenge, and uh, I notice he has already made a comment on one of the practice videos, and he claims that I'm not actually using a ball. Now, seriously, Jeren, are you kidding me? Do you really need me to put a plastic blue ball here? You're not five years old, okay? The geometry is exactly the same. If we had a plastic blue ball here, it would make no difference to the geometry of this camera, okay? The rotational axis is directly above that laser, and if we had a blue ball here, this camera is placed on the edge of the surface, pointing towards north, as it would appear on the globe. If we were facing north in that direction, we are aiming up and we would be looking at Polaris. That is the correct geometry. Do you really need me to put a blue plastic ball there to be able to understand it? I'm sure nobody else has that problem. But anyway, um, I'll continue with the uh, demonstration. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use this small star projector. Okay, you'll see it projects stars onto the ceilings. And when I pull the drapes in the hotel room, they will be uh, evident on the ceiling. And uh, what we're then going to do is put the camera in Star Trails time-lapse mode and then drive the camera mount around slowly like that, okay? It's uh, motorized, 
and we can drive it like that. In fact, I'll go the opposite way to simulate the Northern Hemisphere. Now, what we can also do is just slow that rate down and I'll make it rate five, which means it's going to take many minutes to do a full 360. So that's slewing now, but you can see the rate is so slow. However, that's going to produce nice, accurate star trails. Once again, for Geron, the geometry is perfectly correct for a globe. You don't need me to show you a plastic blue ball here. The geometry is exactly the same. You're not five years old, mate. So the experiment is in progress. I've got the uh, star projector illuminating the ceiling. Now they're not very bright, but they'll show up fine in the uh, time lapse. And I'm just slewing the mount very slowly. It'll probably take more than 10 minutes to do a full 360 degrees. The Star Trails time lapse mode on this camera takes a 25 second frame and then superimposes each frame over the previous one. So we get a good indication of the Star Trails. That'll go for another 25 seconds and then you'll see the progress so far. Now once again, this is exactly how a camera would be moving on a rotating Earth pointed towards Polaris. Here you can see the circles already starting to form. So as you can see, we are able to recreate star trails by simply moving the camera as it would be moving on a rotating Earth in the Northern Hemisphere, facing towards Polaris. Now the stars were stationary and yet we can see the star trails. So Geron's claim has now been fully debunked. Now Geron, I'm sorry that you don't personally understand the geometry and uh, that it was actually correct for the globe, but in fact that is quite irrelevant because everybody else does. Everybody else can see that the geometry of my model is correct for the globe and it's producing star trails. Now once again, I wish you no harm. I wish you a long and happy life. You know, I'm not going to watch your videos. I'm not going to comment on your channel. If you want to keep watching mine, that's entirely fine. You know, I don't really care. But um, as I said, what you believe is entirely up to yourself. Now, one thing I do recommend, uh, however, is start thinking about explaining the equinox on a flat Earth because you still haven't done that. So that's my challenge to you. Explain the equinox sunrise and sunset angles on a flat Earth. You still haven't done that. You used Google Earth last time and uh, that's not a flat Earth at all. I've got big things planned for the next Equinox. I'm ordering one of these mounts in the next couple of weeks and uh, should have uh, a setup similar to this for the next Equinox. So uh, have a nice day, Jaron. Thanks for the challenge. It was a lot of fun and you take care.